All right, folks, welcome uh, to Creation Science Hour. This is Kent Hovind in Pensacola, Florida, and thank you for joining us. We've decided for the next few broadcasts, we've been doing this broadcast for some time on the Creation Science Hour, that we're going to videotape our broadcast and make this available because my son Eric and I are going to be discussing some of the anti-Hovind websites. Oh, what fun. What fun. You're going to be uh, inheriting the ministry... We're going to be inheriting the ministry uh, responsibilities at least one of these days. And so scary. after I'm dead and gone, you're going to have to be uh, the one that takes all the anti hovind websites. Yeah, I'm you've sure made a lot of enemies out there, Dad. I don't know about that. Uh, I'm, I'm not the least bit nervous about it. Okay. <laughs> if you type in Kent Hovind on a uh, search engine like uh, Google or something like that, you will come up with about nearly a thousand hits. Uh, many of these websites are people who don't like us for some reason. Yeah. Now, we've been doing this uh, full-time ministry on creation evolution for about 15 years, I have, and we try to always, at the beginning of the broadcast, state our position and what we're trying to accomplish. I taught high school science 15 years. Uh, Eric went to college in uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, for uh, one year, concentrated study just on creation, and then went to Tennessee Temple, and has now been traveling and speaking how long? Mm, four and a half years. Four and a half years, speaking on creation uh, and evolution and dinosaurs. And you only had one debate so far, right? One debate, and it was a good one. I got it, was, it was awesome. I debated the guy. Uh, ben couple, Wagner was his ben name. Ben Wagner yeah. in Arkansas, and then, uh, and it was quite a slaughter. And then yeah. when the church called back and said, can you debate him again? Um, I said, no, I'm already full for that time, but maybe my son could do it. And uh, how did it work out there? Oh, it worked out great, I tell you what. I mean, just when, you, when you're right, when you have the right answers, there's no doubt about it, it's... It's easy to win. When you're right, it's easy to win. And after that debate, he decided he's not going to debate anymore. Yeah, at the very end, of the, he closed that debate by saying, uh, just to let you know, this will be the last debate I ever do. He was not <laughs> interested in debating again. It, it was, was uh, fun. Not, you know, we tried very hard not to make fun of him at all, but just to just what they make believe. fun of yeah, the, yeah. the, the, the science, right, the so evolution our, that they believe in. Our position is the Bible is literally true, scientifically accurate. The world was created in six literal days, about 6,000 years ago. The evolution theory currently being taught at taxpayer expense in our schools is one of the dumbest and most dangerous ideas in the history of the world. Anybody that believes they came from a rock needs some real serious help. And that's what we're here for. We're here to help. We want to help, no doubt about it. <laughs> we, have the, we have what you need. So tune in and uh, join us. We, are, uh, we have Dinosaur Adventure Land here in our backyard, and we have lots of kids come all the time. And so we just five, closed at 5 o'clock, uh, four minutes ago. Um, and so you're welcome to come down and visit our Dinosaur Adventure Land here in Pensacola if you come. You'll have the time of your life. Awesome place to check out. Two 200-foot cable slides, 50-foot rope swing, climbing wall, Congo Trail, Fossil Dig Pit. you got to come check out. And dinosaur Adventureland. Brand new Dinosaur Adventureland water. Yes, from the time of the dinosaurs, just a couple thousand billion years, ago. years ago. No. <laughs> and you can have $1 off. You buy the water for a dollar and get a dollar cents. off. Get the water for 75 and get a dollar off. You can't you beat a deal. You can't beat a deal. Like we'll pay you a quarter to come. Wow. Wow. Okay, what we're going to do, uh, the first website that comes up uh, is the website uh, called uh, from geocities.com slash Kent Hovind. So if you'd like to go to geocities.com slash Kent Hovind, assuming by the time you watch this videotape, if you get the tape, that he is still brave enough to keep this site up there, uh, I suspect it'll be gone by then, I would hope. It's been up for a long time. Uh, I mean, I would suspect years. We have contacted the host of the site, Carl Mary Church, in uh, Australia. And uh, for the last week, Jonathan uh, over here has been uh, corresponding with him, inviting him to be on the program. He's welcome to call in. Uh, what we're going to do today is limit the calls to only related to some of the anti hoven websites, this one in particular at first. We're going to gradually go through as many as we can and I'll finally answer some of the critics. I get thousands of emails here, about 1,500 uh, a week actually, and uh, frequently somebody writes in and says, hey, I notice there's a lot of anti hoven sites, why don't you answer them? Well, Abe Lincoln in the Civil War was asked the question, why don't you answer your critics? He said, there's a war going on. I'm going to fight the war. He said, history will tell whether I was right or not. So, you know, Some why waste time? more important. That's exactly right. They don't want an answer anyway. When you do uh, speak at churches and stuff, you have Q&A time, like I do. Mm -hmm. And you have uh, skeptics come and ask dumb questions sometimes. And my analysis is, they don't want an answer. No, they definitely don't. They don't want an answer. There's, I, I think there's basically three types of people. Those that believe in creation, those that are not sure, and those that believe in evolution. It's very difficult to talk to those that believe in evolution if you believe in creation because they really don't want an answer. They if like you, their theory. They really do. Yeah, and so the best thing you can do is, is talk to those that are unsure, those that uh, are, are genuinely seeking the truth. And when you genu genuinely seek the truth, there's no doubt about it, you're going to come to the creation side because right. that's what we did. But then, see, so you don't just come to the creation side because then that involves a creator. 
which might involve some rules, yeah, like the thou shalt not. That's exactly <laughs> what they're trying to avoid. So we're going to notify, as we go through some of these uh, major sites that have been up for years, uh, 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 talking bad about Kent Hovind, we're going to notify the host, if we can get a hold of them, uh, well ahead of time, saying you're welcome to call anybody on the program, or you're welcome to AOL Instant Messages. Our uh, screen name is Dr. Dino Live, if you have AOL Instant Message, or go to our website, Dr. Dino, and then go to uh, the Creation Science Hour uh, icon on the front page, and then Dr. and uh, AOL Instant Message. And Jonathan will get it and hand it to us with his handy little dinosaur, and he will uh, hand us the AOL Instant Message. But we would like to limit it. Normally, we just take any questions on the topic of creation evolution, but for tonight, and maybe for the next couple of times, we'd like to take it on, oh, there we go, the dinosaur. Questions on the anti hoven site, particularly the one, geocities.com slash Kent Hoven. By, okay, so I'm going to read a few things off the site. If you're not watching, you can. I'll try to record exactly here, and For, we'll just let, let me say those of you that are AOL instant messaging, we are going to save those questions till the second half of the hour. First of all, we're just going to be dealing with uh, the anti hoven sites. Okay, here we go. Carl mm -hmm. Mary Church writes. Uh, he says, uh, "Get to the." Okay, he's invited to call in. Uh, in his introduction, he says. The purpose of this site is to analyze the logic and science used in the presentations of a creation science evangelist named Kent Hovind at the right. Got my picture there. Good and picture, by the way. he's right. That's what he says right there. He says yep. he's right. So. I'm still using the high school graduation picture. Mm. Worked good for 30 years. Working Why change? You know? um, this analysis will mainly focus on objective issues, science issues, related to Kent Hovind's seminar. Uh, Carl, you said in your correspondence to Jonathan you would correct any mistakes uh, in this website. I would suggest maybe before the word Kent Hovind you add the word to, T-O. Um, have a typo there. Uh, proper English would call for the word too. Okay, science issues related to uh, Kent Hovind seminars. There will not be analysis of Hovind's theological position, communist conspiracies, new world order, or mark of the beast claims. See conspiracy quotes. He's got a link there. Um, the, ba <laughs> the basis of young earth creation science is a literal interpretation of the book of Genesis from the Christian Bible. The known universe, planets, stars, animals, and ultimately humans it is suggested, were supernaturally created in six literal days around 4000 BCE. Hold it. Let me stop you right there. Right there he says BCE. Right. What is he talking about there? Before the Common Era. What do you think it ought to be? When I grew up in school, we always called it BC. That's what we learned, BC. Yeah, this is a subtle way they try to leave Christ out. Ah, before it's, Christ is what it really should be. All over the textbooks, and I have thousands of textbooks all around there. We're in the middle of the library here. Um, they are changing it in the last probably... it's depending on the publisher, last five to eight years, it's now becoming all BCE instead of BCE. Doing everything BC. they can to get Christ everything out of get Christ Wow. Out. Anyway, uh, Mr. Mary Church mm -hmm. writes, approximately 2300 BCE, the world was supposedly destroyed by a global flood except for a selection of animals and eight humans aboard the largest wooden boat ever constructed. And now, Carl, I would change that. Ever constructed up to that time. Okay, there have been quite a few wooden boats by the Chinese, apparently, constructed much larger than Noah's Ark uh, be after that time. So I would add the phrase, up to the time. Okay? Uh, obviously, young earth creationism is in conflict with mainstream science in general. Uh, let me stop right there and say, I don't think that's quite correct. There may be some scientists who are uh, in conflict with young earth creationism, but all of the ones that are right believe in young earth creationism. That's correct. So it's only the ones that are wrong that don't believe in that. And there are thousands, literally thousands of scientists who are young earth creationists, or certainly creationists. Every branch of science was started by creationists, yeah. not by evolutionists. Evolution is a useless theory. It really hasn't done anything to even help out science. It's done more to hinder it than it's Doesn't done to ever help it. Yeah. You know, they're, even they're, if it's true, it's useless. Yeah, they're trying so hard to prove this one theory. Uh, scientific method would simply say, you know, you got a problem. How did we get here? You form a hypothesis, then you gather evidence. Well, they haven't found any evidence. There's None been no evidence whatsoever. We've been offering a quarter million dollars for a long time for proof yeah. for evolution. Do you get this when you go speak at seminars? Ask, what about this offer? Yeah, what about the offer? I, I think I think he just got oh, later up now. on okay. the site. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to there, Carl. Hang on. Uh, he says, uh, I have offered Kent Hovind the opportunity of an unedited, unlimited length right to reply to be hosted on this site. So far, he has ignored the offer. Well, Carl, let me explain why, okay? I have other things to do, Okay. I don't think you want an answer anyway, number one. Number two, nobody cares what you think, all right? Uh, Plus, you can't type all that fast. <laughs> Plus, I type about 12 words a minute with, with my nine, nine 19 mistakes. mistakes, right? Columbus style. Find so it and land on it. I can talk fast. I can think on my feet fast or on my uh, seat, for that matter. But um, I don't type very fast. So I'm not about to get into an email debate. I've said that clearly on my website. I, I'm not interested in an email debate. 
I will take you on face-to-face uh, -face if I come to Australia, where you are, if you want to come to the States. Uh, I've got a standing offer to debate any number of evolutionists simultaneously with half my brain tied behind my back. <laughs> exactly. Were you at the one when it was two against one in Missouri? I wasn't there, but I've seen it. Yeah. Oh, that was hilarious. They said, well, we'll debate Ken Hovind if it can be two of us. I said, it could be ten of you. <laughs> Honestly, if you want to schedule a debate someplace, uh, that'd be wonderful. I have two conditions I ask for. If there's ten of them and one of me, that's uh, perfectly fine. But I want half the time. Right. Equal uh, time. That's, equal time. That's obvious. Uh, I don't care which of their ten answers the question. Secondly, I want one topic at a time. I don't want them bringing up 30 topics. I have time to answer four. And so it looks like... He doesn't know the rest. Doesn't know the rest. <laughs> yeah, when I do, <laughs> I just do don't have time to answer them all. So half the time and one topic at a time, you bring the whole science department from any university you've got. Bring in anybody you want to help. So, Carl, if you're wondering why I haven't, I have ignored your offer. I've already clearly said I don't get involved in email debates, number one. Number two, I don't have time. I don't think most people care what you think. I just today, for the first time, looked at your website um, more than, I think I spent about three minutes on it one time a few months ago. And I said, this guy needs some help. And that's why we're here to help you. We're going to help you tonight. Okay. That's right. Uh, and then I went to your comments. People are writing in comments. There are, how many comments, Jonathan? Uh, 13 or 14 pages, 13 or 14 yeah. pages of... I can't hear your mic, I think. He's at 40,000 hits on his site. And uh, to the to, just to the comments page or just to his site in general? That is subject, okay. We've and, had X number of million hits to our site, okay? so um, And many of those sites, aren't they simply just copying the information and kind of making their own site with it? They're yeah. Not, they're not... It's a big chain of anti hoven sites. You can link, you can go to the next, and it goes to the next one automatically at the bottom of his site here. We'll get to that That's pretty much the exact same stuff. So I've ignored your offer because... Um, I don't have time, and I don't care, and I don't think most people care what you think on the topic. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but, you know, that's the way it is, okay? I have other things to do, okay? <laughs> okay. It says, I've also offered to correct any errors or misunderstandings. Neither Hoven nor his staff has attempted to identify any. He says, neither Hoven nor his staff had, have not attempted to identify any, which would mean we have attempted to identify that's any. That's true. Have not. I tried to read the proper English in there instead of what it says. Okay. Got another one for you to fix. Take out that word not if you want to have it correct there. Neither have not attempted to identify. Maybe that's the way they speak in Australia, Eric. That's a good point. We were over there, remember? Yeah, yeah. They do talk kind of funny. You don't ask for a napkin, I know that. That's for sure. You don't. <laughs> and your diaper. That's a diaper. Yeah, I don't ask. I was at the restaurant. <laughs> I don't want a napkin. Okay. Uh, okay, so the reason we haven't attempted to identify any, I haven't even read it, okay? I have lots to do. I get thousands of phone calls and emails, and I just, I, I'd rather go talk to somebody who wants to hear the truth. And I'm suspecting from what I, little bit I've read, you don't really want to hear it, but I'm going to give it to you anyway, because I think you need it, whether Here you want it, it or not. Okay. Here's the answers. Here's the answer. Oh, okay. Um, he says, more observant readers may have noticed I have not given my name. Oops. I already told him it's Carl Mary Church. Uh, Even that may be a screen name. I've true. noticed a lot of these atheists are scared to give their name. They're anonymous. You know, they can remain anonymous behind their uh, website, and you know, and nobody knows who they are. Like they're afraid I'm going to go do something to them. You know, uh, there are <laughs> some uh, weird you. weird people out there, though. There you are some admit. weird people. Look, <laughs> I'm I'm your friend. Honestly, I'm here to help. Okay. Um, he's noticed I'm not given my name. I've done this deliberately for numerous reasons. Who I am is quite irrelevant. Unlike Hoven, I have no intention of operating a cult of personality. What in the world is he talking this about? This is one of those backhanded slaps you get all the time by the atheists, you know, yeah. they accuse you of things. A cult of personality. Are we trying to build a cult? I certainly don't think so. You've been, uh, you've known me for 20... 25 years. 25 years, and uh, I, are we trying to build a name for ourselves or a, that you know of? Definitely not. No, the, the whole reason we exist is simply to, to glorify the kingdom of God, is to glorify Christ, and to see more people come to the realization and to come to the truth of the fact that, that, God is the creator. Jesus Christ was his son, yeah. is his son. And he really did truly come on this earth and die. And so that, that's the whole purpose of this is to show people we that take and show on, them yeah. the reason that, that he did that. And we take on all kinds of unpopular subjects in our seminar yeah. precisely because I don't care what anybody thinks. What does God think? What does his book say? And that's end of story. Exactly. If it upsets my wife, I still stick with the truth. You it's upset her more than once. <laughs> okay, so if it upsets my own family, I, I still am going to stick with the yeah. truth. What is the truth? Okay, we don't care what... Uh, oh, thing. another dinosaur coming in here. Yay, Jonathan. All right. Um, so you've not given your name, Carl. I apologize. I've already given Carl Mary Church's name out a couple times. He doesn't... I say a cult personality. Carl, you need to remove that, okay? Because you're implying that I have... Uh, you know, implying nothing. You're saying that I have uh, an intention to operate a cult of personality. This is baloney. You're either mistaken or you're lying. Okay, take that line out. 
He goes on and says, Judging by some of the strange emails I occasionally receive, I feel safer not having miscellaneous oddballs knowing too many of my personal details. Well, Carl, my name, address, and phone number is on everything we produce, as far as I know. If it's not, it's an oversight. We intend for it to be. Not because I'm developing a cult personality. I want people to be able to contact me if they have a question. Because in America, I don't know about Australia, but in America, you have a right to face your accusers. That's right, yeah. So if somebody's accusing me of something, like you've done on your website here, then you should you should face your accusers. You get a right to defend yourself, which I'm going to do here on this uh, broadcast today. And this will be on videotape, available on the website, by the way, for everybody in the world to watch. And your 39,000 uh, viewers... Uh, are a drop in the bucket compared to the millions and millions we get on our site. So, And yours comes up right after mine. I mean, you type in Kent Hovind, his comes up first. So the other Anti Hovind websites are getting even less attention. So in one sense, it doesn't matter what they say, but I do get emails frequently saying, hey, I read this, what do you think? Why don't you respond? So I'm going to do this once and forget it. I'm not going to, it's not going to, I'm not going to dwell on this, believe me. I have other things to do. Our philosophy is, if I've got to plant a garden to feed my family for the winter, half my yard is good dirt, half my yard is hard rock. I'm going to go ahead and plant the good dirt first. If I have time, I'll work on the rock. If I don't, oh well. At least I got a crop coming in. So I don't waste a lot of time on atheists. I, I don't have, not that I can't. I just they're not. They don't want to be plowed. Okay. <laughs> we just got an instant uh, message from Fierce Three One Two, and he says you guys are speaking with a lot of anger behind your words. Anger behind the words. I uh, want it to be to be noted that I, I don't I don't think I'm we're angry at all with uh, Carl or whoever it really is behind this site. Uh, we just simply want the truth to be known. We feel like it's a coward trying to come up and attack uh, what's going on, and uh, we're here defending the truth. Well, I understand the criticism. I get that occasionally. Uh, honestly, uh, I am angry at those who, especially when I debate professors, when I realize they are taking tax dollars to destroy the faith of kids coming yeah. through their class. Go sit in a public university, go sit in a class where they teach evolution, and watch how they ridicule Christians. Yeah. If I was going to go into Nazi Germany 50 years ago and rescue some Jews from a concentration camp. I would have a hard time being nice to the guards. That would be difficult. It would be difficult, okay? Uh, I don't want to have to hurt them, but sometimes you have to hurt them, okay? Yeah. And sometimes you have to really smite the scorner so the simple will beware, like it says in Proverbs. There's a lot of people that will learn from that. Right. Because yeah. I really do want to help Carl and other atheists or evolutionists out. I really do, honestly. That's my heart. And I think we've proven that. We've given out thousands of videotapes all over to people. Yeah. We've never copyrighted our material. Um, and, you know, if anybody would be affected by that, it would be my children, who, if there was anything to inherit, would somebody inherit it? And their, their, their uh, position would be, well, Dad, we ought to make money off of this stuff. You know, you've poured a lot of research into this. And, sorry, there won't be anything to inherit. Go build your own, go build your own ministry, okay? Uh, Plus, the stuff is available on free, uh, free on our website, drdiner.com. Sure. But th it is a good point, and I, I don't want anybody. I do come across angry once in a while. I guess I am a little bit angry about some of this, but um, the goal is to win them. But yeah. also at the same time, I don't want to allow them to continue destroying the faith of others. Right. Websites like this might cause an honest seeker to write me off. Oh, break time. So join us, folks. If you want to call in or AOL instant message us, we'll be uh, back on the air in just a moment. All right, folks, welcome back to the Creation Science Hour. This is Kent Hovind and my son Eric talking about some of the anti Hovind websites. We're getting lots of AOL instant messages saying we're not being mean to the guy, uh, but I understand I do get criticized for being mean. Um, uh, one quick story and then we'll go on. Uh, prophets of Baal, Elijah. Elijah killed 850 prophets of Baal. That's mean. That's definitely mean. <laughs> That's definitely mean. Um, <laughs> Wow. I don't want to kill a Cory Mary Church. I want, I want to win for the Lord. And I would never kill anybody unless they were threatening my family. You know, self-defense is the only time I would ever do it. So, uh, Carl, you're perfectly safe. Um, I'm sorry if you feel mean, if uh, you feel like I've been mean. Oh, another message. Jonathan and the dinosaur. Good. Okay. He has quite a few things. If you go to the uh, uh, geocities.com slash Kent Hovind, the second thing that comes up is, uh, let's see, I had it here a second ago. Oh, here it is. Home. Uh, was, who is Kent Hovind? In there, he has links to quite a few things, which are linked later. In this. So I'm going to skip that one and go to the third one, the quarter million dollar challenge. And I'm going to read this right off his website and then answer, give, give responses. This, this tape or uh, program is to uh, uh, respond to the critics. By the way, we're getting lots of AOL instant messages that are unrelated to the um, purpose of today's program. So I'm sorry, we're going to save those to last. If we get to them, we will. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll try. 
And I know I apologize if you're listening. I know to the program, and um, we'll get we're just going to gonna continue on for a few more minutes on uh, on this anti open web yeah. website for the because uh, I get a chance to defend myself. Okay, the quarter million dollar challenge. You on that one? Okay. Okay. The uh, following is analysis of Hovind's quarter million dollar challenge. The text of Hovind is quoted from and it links to my offer, which is on my website, Dr. Dino. Hovind's words are in bold. Seasoned Hovind watchers. Seasoned Hovind watchers. Wow. <laughs> seasoned Hovind watcher. Oh, anyway. May notice that he has removed references to some of the more controversial aspects of the challenge. Well, Carl, what I've done, I've tried to refine it so people, uh, some of the people of lower IQ out there who don't understand the challenge will be able to understand it. We've just tried to make it easier for them to understand. Because some of the stuff that's come in uh, to accept the quarter million dollar challenge is so dumb. Absolutely I'm wondering, ridiculous, yeah. how are they not understanding this? You know, uh, we've probably only had, I think, probably 10 uh, over the years even attempts at the challenge. Almost all of them. They write in and say, well, what, what bank is it in? What's the bank account number? Yeah. Who's in charge? You know, <laughs> Our word is good. If I make a promise, I will do it. And I can vouch for that as his son. There's okay. no doubt about it. My okay. dad's an honest man, and the gentleman, the friend of ours, definitely has the money. Okay, okay. <laughs> the, guy, the guy who's backing it up. He's this loaded. Would, this would be pocket change. Okay, yeah. so a quarter million. He offered, as soon as I printed thousands of dollars worth of you know, stuff advertising the quarter million dollar offer, he called and said, hey, let's make it a million. I said, forget it. Uh, I've already got thousands of dollars yeah. in printing. You know? We'll leave it at that. There's no reason to go farther. It really? could be 250 million, though, for that matter. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, seasoned Hoven watchers, notice he's removed some of the more controversial aspects of the challenge. Uh, I have, honestly, Carl, I'm trying to be fair. I really want to see evidence for evolution. Um, I am so convinced there is none, zero. There is no evidence for, the, for this theory, which is why I try to carefully define it. And if we have to you know, modify it to make it more understandable, I will. He says, I will be highlighting where Hovind has been less than explicit in his terms. A list of past and present challengers is included at the end of this article. Here's the analysis of the present version of Hovind's challenge. Uh, and he, he has bold, if you're reading on the website, he has my stuff bolded and then his response. Um, he says, I quarter million dollars to anyone who can give empirical evidence, scientific proof for evolution, and an asterisk. Notice, Mary Church writes, notice the little star. Hovind is working with a very broad definition of evolution. While most people would have thought his challenge was in regards to biological evolution, this would be a misconception. Hovind is attacking every conclusion of science which contradicts a literal reading of Genesis. I'll call you totally misunderstanding. Yeah. I'm not attacking anything that contradicts Genesis. Genesis is unrelated to this. The fact is, there, the word evolution does have six meanings. Yeah. They, t they want to limit this to biological evolution. I say, wait a minute, where did you get the living creature to evolve? If you don't have a theory that goes back to a beginning, you don't have a complete theory. Yeah, and I find when people, if you're listening right now, I find that when people understand this and we, when you share this information with your friends, the six types of evolution, and show them that only one of them has anything to do with science. Right. And it's really not even evolution. That really makes them have to step back and really look at the theory in a totally different way. And even evolutionists, when they comprehend that finally, it hits them like, wow, boy, this is, this is right. Yeah, yeah, it really does. I did a debate last uh, two weeks ago, in, or three, whenever it was, I travel too much, but in C California, and the guy wrote, and it specifically said, I don't want to discuss anything about evolution other than once life is here. Where, why I said, would okay. you want to do that? Yeah, why do you want to do that? Because you know the first four steps are impossible to exactly. overcome. You know, where did matter come from? Where did space come from? Where did energy come from? Where did, uh, how did life get started from non-living material? So, Carl, the reason I spell out on my theory clearly, I'm offering a quarter million dollars for proof for the general theory because the whole theory, all six parts of evolution, are being taught in the textbooks. Exactly. I can show it to you in the 2004 textbooks, the ones that are coming out, uh, they're already out, actually, for next year. Yeah. I've got them, mm -hmm. right? Um, and they are teaching the Big Bang Theory. They are teaching yeah. life started from non-living material. They are teaching stars evolved. They are teaching the things that I mentioned. They certainly are teaching macroevolution, which says, you know, dogs and bananas have a common ancestor. Right. So, yes, if you want me or my son to pay for this to be taught in the textbooks, then you need to provide an answer. If you can't answer how these things happen, then take it out of the textbook. Exactly. I, I did one debate one time, and the guy said, well, um, I think we should limit this just to, you know, biological evolution, like Carl says here, you know, once life gets started. I say, well, then are you admitting that you have no evidence for the first five, or first four of the stages of my evolution? He says, well, yeah, they're probably, we can, probably can't prove any of those. I said, okay, then before we go on, will you then help me 
get those four out of the textbook. <laughs> he got real quiet. I bet he did. Wow. Not yeah, take it out of the textbook. It's not part of science. Yeah. That ought to be in a religion class or maybe a fairy tale class or in a private school. Yeah. You want to teach evolution at your expense to kids that want to pay and come learn it? You can teach whatever you want. For those that don't know the six different types of evolution, while you're looking at what you're going to discuss next with this $250,000 offer, there are basically six types of evolution. First one is cosmic evolution, which is the origin of time, space, and matter. Many evolutionists refer to it as the Big Bang. Second one is chemical evolution, how all this, uh, the chemicals evolve from just hydrogen and helium. Then we have stellar and planetary evolution, correct, how all the stars and planets formed. Fourth is organic evolution, how life came from non-life. Fifth type of evolution is ma uh, macroevolution. That would be changing from one type of animal into a different type of animal. And then the I final... use the word kind. Different, like the Bible says kind. Kind of animal. That's true. One kind into another one. Another and then uh, the last type of evolution is microevolution, which, uh, like I said, it's not really evolution because all it is is simple variations. It's not even a good kind. term. I hate yeah. the term microevolution, but they use it, so we need to define it. It's a variation. Dogs and wolves probably had a common ancestor. That does not prove dogs and bananas have a common ancestor. Yeah. And I've they, heard, I don't, they don't get it. <laughs> they just don't I've get it. so many evolutionists say, if we could live here and we were around for 100,000 years, we could see the evolution taking place. And I say that's precisely my point. Exactly. We don't observe it, so it's no longer science. And if it's not science, yet you believe in it, what realm would it have to be put into? It's a religion. Exactly right. It yeah. has to be put into the realm of religion. And you can believe it if you want. But I don't want to pay for it. Exactly. <laughs> That's all. The case closed, you know. Uh, okay, so Carl says uh, the challenge, uh, he said, he thought, it, most people uh, thought his challenge would be in regards to biological evolution. This would be a misconception. Well, no, Carl, it's perfectly correct that all six parts, all six phases or steps, whatever you want to call it, of evolution are taught in the textbooks. And the offer clearly spells out this is what we're talking about. We're not referring to minor changes within the kind, and I'm going to stick with the Bible word kind, because a horse and a zebra are the same kind of animal. A horse and a, and a banana are not. Okay? And I think the dividing up of the kinds could be done by a five-year-old in 99% of the cases. There may be a few tricky ones where, I don't know what kind of animal that is. What group is that going? Okay. But a five-year-old can divide up most of the animals into the kinds. Okay? For the other ones, you might need a six-year-old to do those. Okay. Okay. Uh, so he says, Hovind is attacking every conclusion of science which contradicts the literal reading of Genesis. Carl, I would take that sentence out. That is simply not true. Okay? Leave that. Take that out of there. And then he's got straw man in red print here. Empirical evidence does not constitute scientific proof because nothing in science is proven, only understood based upon known evidence. Um, I think you're, what they've tried to do here, you've probably yeah. seen this, Eric, in the last 20 years, they've tried to redefine science. Yeah. And really, we can't know anything. Yeah, we can't know anything. Right. right. The probability of this, you know, of this lid falling is is pretty good, but what if on the one millionth time it didn't fall? Yeah, we can't know. Oh, we can't know. <laughs> I think that's retarded. Okay. Science means knowledge. Yeah. Plain and simple. It, a further definition, you can look it up in most older dictionaries. I wouldn't know about the new ones if I trust them. Oh, yeah, I got, a, I got one from 2002, and it, it had a great definition of science. Systemized okay. knowledge derived from observation and study. That's what it's it is. It's a great one. Actually, it's on my desk if you want to grab that for me. Dictionary 2002. Yeah. Okay. So, evolution is outside of the field of science. It is a religion people believe in, which is fine. Hey, you can believe whatever you want. I don't care what you believe. I just don't want to pay for your religion to be taught in the schools. Simple. Okay. Um, and then he lists my observed phenomena. from. You can read the uh, article, the $250,000 off on my website, drdino.com. Read it for yourself. So I'm going to just read his comments here. Uh, he says, straw man. Hovind has ignored further options. I better read the options. Let's see. The choice of how the universe got here, basically, uh, from my website, there's three choices. The universe was created by God. The universe has always existed. The universe came into being by itself, by purely natural process known as evolution, so that no appeal to the supernatural is needed. And Carl says, Hovind has ignored further options. Among others, these could be, number four, the universe was created by a team of deities. Talk about Straining at a gnat, yeah. swallowing a camel. Okay. Ultimately, that means it was created by a deity. Okay, okay God. Uh, number five, the universe was created by a deity or deities using natural methods, theistic evolution. I think that would still fit into category one, the universe was created by God. Right. Now, the textbooks, though, don't give that option, Carl. And my, one of my uh, drives is to uh, correct the textbooks because that's what we're all paying for. Yeah. What people believe out there in La La Land doesn't matter to me. What's, what are we paying for? Okay. I'm paying for the kids in this town to be taught the evolution theory 
and they do not mention theistic evolution as even an option. We'll have to talk about that in a later program to get into what theistic evolution is, how some people believe that God used evolution to create everything. We'll what kind of a later. God would be that dumb that would be that have to have to yeah. practice and play around? You know, it's not the God of the Bible. Definitely. It's not a God with any brains. <laughs> It's not a God you'd want to worship. It's not a God I serve. I know that. No, no. The God I did serve did it right first time, first six time. days. <laughs> he got and doesn't right. need to practice. And plus, the God of evolution would be cruel. I mean, evolution's a cruel process. One animal crazy. evolves a little better than the rest. What must happen to the rest? they got to die. they got to die. Which, by the way, is why I believe many people believe in it, because it allows them, especially businessmen. I just spoke at a businessman's luncheon. I believe many businessmen take that idea of evolution because that rationalizes some of the taxes that, tactics that they use in the business world. The That's what Carnegie survived. did. Yeah. Carnegie was a Christian. And then when he read the evolution, he read Darwin's book, got converted to believing in evolution, and said, this is perfect. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the most uh, ruthless businessman there is. We're going to build a big steel empire, the Carnegie Empire, mm -hmm. and you know, cut, cutthroat competition. This was uh, uh, Rockefeller's problem. Uh, this was people of the 18, late 1800s used evolution to justify the ruthless business practices, which finally led Congress to get into the trust busters and the yeah. breaking up the monopolies and stuff like that. Let me go on here. Okay. He says, number six, the universe is actually a manifestation of a deity. You're still back on number one, Carl. Take all this out, okay? This is, you're making yourself look a little silly here, which is what many folks in your comment section have said. You know, you're looking kind of silly here, so I'd recommend you take that out. I'm trying to help you, okay? I want to help your image, mm -hmm. right? Uh, number seven, the universe is the offshoot of another universe. That goes back into category <laughs> number three. It's still naturalistic. And okay? where did that universe come from? Where did that universe come from? This postpones the problem. It doesn't solve the problem. Number eight, the universe is perpetual. Okay, Carl, the reason I don't mention that as an option, I think that is against all known laws of, laws of science, that things, there's no such thing as a perpetual motion machine. Yeah. All, what we observe is first and second laws of thermodynamics, things don't create themselves, and they're winding down. Everything does tend toward disorder. Take a I look like at take, my hair. Take a look in your sock drawer, you'll see. Okay? It does. Everything tends toward disorder. Okay. So end of is not a logical option. And uh, if somebody wants to believe that, that's fine. That, that would make the universe their god, though, wouldn't it? That's if, true. if the universe was eternal, literally the universe would be their god. Yeah. You're deifying that the is universe. God. Number nine, the universe is a science project of an alien teenager. <laughs> well, if you want to go off on this kind of stuff, Carl, you're going to go off all day. You yeah. Option 10, 11, mm. 12, 13, 14. The universe is a science project of a hamster. Uh, the universe is a science project. <laughs> I mean, come on. He says okay. the length of this list is only limited by our imagination. Well, I would say he would have a really long list if we're going to go by his imagination here. So, uh, yeah, let's stick with reality here, okay? Okay. And then he goes back quoting what I said on my website. Evolution has been acclaimed as being the only process capable of causing the observed phenomena. Evolution is presented in our public science textbooks as a process that brought time, space, matter into existence from nothing. And then he has a section here. Straw man. Hoven makes the erroneous claim that the universe originated from pure nothingness numerous times. Hmm. Okay, Eric, have you seen, in seminar part one, the quotes that were used from Scientific American, oh, yeah. uh, Discover Magazine. Did Discover, April of 2002, Discover Magazine said, where did everything come from, you know? Uh, and it literally says, from nothing. The universe absolutely. burst into says, something from absolutely nothing. nothing. Zero. Zero. Nada. Alan, Alan Guth, yes, is the writer of that. Okay, read the definition of science. It's 2002 dictionary. Yeah. 2002, page 1045, uh, science. This is Webster's uh, Collegiate Dictionary, 10th edition. Here we go. Science is a department of systemized knowledge as an object of study. Studied or learned like systemized knowledge. Knowledge or a system of knowledge covering general truths or the operation of general laws. Okay. Tested by the, through the scientific method. Scientific method deals with things that are testable, demonstrable. You can do an it experiment. Has, yeah, it says, here's what you do for the scientific method. You've got to have a problem, first of all. What's our problem? When I speak in public schools, I bring this up. According to the scientific method, what is our problem? All how, the kids realize. Why are we here? Exactly. That's How do we get here? Question. Where are we going? Why are we here? Where do we come from? Where are we going when we die? Then it says you got to collect data. Uh-oh. Here's what we've got for data. 6,000 years of human history has shown us dogs produce dogs. dogs. Every single time. Every time. We now, can if you write that down in the data column. If you want to imagine that sometime long ago and far away, dogs came from non-dogs, okay, you just left science and went yeah. to religion. Now you're outside of all kinds of science. And I, I, I've been tempted to go through a textbook sometime with two different color highlighters and you know highlight yellow science statements and pink uh, religion because yeah. they mix them. It's just oh, thoroughly yeah. mixed in. They make it seem like it's all the same thing when really there is a distinct difference that's, yeah. uh, that you should be able to watch. All right, let's go on here. Um, 
So Hovind makes the erroneous claim, the universe originated from pure nothingness. Well, Carl, that's because that's what the textbooks say, and that's what the science journals say. And I show that clearly. Watch my seminar part one, which you can watch right on the website, drdino.com. You can watch it for free. Yep. Uh, or if you want to get it from us, you can get it on DVD or VHS or put it on any like format that. you need. We got it. Okay, number two. I state, organized that matter into galaxy stars and at least nine planets around the sun. This process referred to cosmic evolution. And Mary Church says, stellar and planetary formation, which has been photographed at least four times by the Hubble telescope, and he gives the uh, things here. Carl, let me explain something to you, which yeah. I cover in my seminar, part seven. We've never seen a star form. No. We see spots getting brighter. And even taking a picture would not show a star forming. True. I mean, a still photograph would never show a star forming. Now, since there are about 70 sextillion known stars, which amounts to 11 trillion per person on planet Earth, wow. uh, the evolutionist is a real problem because he doesn't know how any of them formed. Yet they're there. We see them blowing up all the time, called a nova or supernova. Okay, right. About every 25 years, we lose a star. Well, you got that many, who cares? But, yeah. um, but they have to find a solution for how do we get them. So they come up with this idea that maybe stars are forming in, you know, Crab Nebula or, you know, Orion Cloud or something. What, what they don't catch is what they're seeing is a spot getting brighter. They're not seeing a star form. A, a freshman law student could tear this one apart for you, Carl, because it could be the dust is clearing. There's a star behind it. Talk about more of this after the break. Welcome back to the Creation Science Hour. This is uh, the hour where Dr. Hovind answers his critics. And from the looks of things, it's going to take more than just an hour to answer all your critics. Uh, but right now we got a phone call. All right, yes, Pamela, on line one. Go ahead. Okay, well, let me take one question at a time, Pamela. I can barely hear you. We've got a real complex system here. You're saying that I keep calling evolution a religion, and you want to know what definition of religion? Did you hear that, Eric? Yeah, how is evolution a religion? Well, that's why when you define the six meanings of evolution, then it becomes easy. The first five are religious. Only number six is science. Well, Pamela, how would you divide up the steps? Do you think that uh, the changes we observe, like dogs and wolves having a common ancestor, do you think that is evidence enough to decide that dogs and bananas have a common ancestor? You're, you're not answering the question. You, you've created six different de uh, definitions of evolution. That's not standard science. You, so you are, are saying that somebody has to prove basically all of those. That's not science. You're creating your own thing. Pamela, all he's doing is making it very simple to understand what evolution is. When we look at the, if you, if you were to say the word evolution in a public school, most kids think of everything involved with evolution. They think of the Big Bang. They think of, you know, stars how humans forming. evolved, how stars formed. All we're doing is simplifying it, saying there are actually, when you want to discuss it, it you, have to, you have to know what you're discussing. Defining well, the term. Actually, We're defining the term. So yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's say that is my definition. You can't use the term biological evolution. That I mean, you're you're creating things that aren't there, and then saying, well, see, that proves that evolution didn't happen. Well, now hold on, Pamela. Part of evolution. This is my program. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> uh, firstly, okay. Well, sure. But if anybody who's listening wants to really know what science is, they can look up for themselves instead of taking your word for it or my word for it. Okay. Is it science that? Dogs and bananas have a common ancestor. It's not, yes, it is science. You think that is science? That is something we know from observation. Definition of science. Definition Things we have, of science right here. 2002 Webster's Dictionary is systemized knowledge derived from observation. What observation tells us that dogs and bananas, or let's make it easy, dogs and cows. Now we have two mammals, okay? What observation shows us that dogs and cows have a common ancestor? Oh, yeah, hold on. You're throwing up a straw man here. You're mixing apples and oranges. No, you're saying that you have to be able to see something, and I'm saying we cannot see everything. I'm okay. saying that the definition of science, if you want to deal with science, which is what you say you want to deal with, if you we're trying to call it non-science, we're calling it a religion, if you want to deal strictly with science, then where's the evidence that we see for dogs and cows being related? There's anybody who's interested in knowing the truth 
going to be listening to this program. They're going to be calling. They're listening in because they want uh, justification for the belief. If somebody really wants the truth, they look at both sides of the story, and then they make a decision. Agreed. That's called an okay. education, which yeah. is very true. That's what you should and do. And students are not getting that in our public school. <clears throat> They're not getting both sides of the story. They're getting one side. They're getting hammered with this from kindergarten to, you know, through Ph.D. level. That evolution is a fact, evolution is a fact, and it's not a fact. It's, it's a dumb idea, and it's a religion. If I, okay, still, can we get back to the question of how evolution is a religion? Well, okay. if it's not science, it's if you can't prove the dog and the cow are related, yet you want to teach that, but it's, it can't be proved through observation and study, that would take it outside the realm of science. It's now something you believe happened, but it's no longer observable. So that's religion. You have to believe in it. You're saying that everything that is not science in the world is a religion. No, I didn't say that. Not I say all. something you believe in, and certainly if you look up the definition of religion, you can check it out. Yeah. I don't have time on the program today. Yeah, but Well, you believe, see, religion, the definition, if I recall, just off the top of my head, is belief in a power or powers that cre brought the universe into existence. Um, the evolution fits the definition fine. Uh, and Pamela, I, we got a lot of other things to, if we can talk, and you can call in, I don't want to shut you off here too soon, but uh, you haven't really, I think I have answered your question, that evolution is a religion by our definition. Yeah. You haven't answered it, and you, you haven't yet changed the topic. I'm not changing the topic. I'm pointing out that you have to believe that dogs and cows are related. If, if, you believe, but I, if you believe in ghosts, I believe the sun's coming up tomorrow. What religion am I? No, you see the sun coming up. We have known scientific evidence that says the sun will come up, and we understand the science behind why it comes up. We don't ever see cows, pro and, uh, cows produce anything but cows. Nobody said that. Nobody is trying to say that cows produce uh, Pamela, oh, you watch, you're wrong. <laughs> watch my videotape number four, where I show very clearly, page after page from the textbooks, that yeah. says... All animals are related. Yes. Charles Darwin said, uh, I think they're going to shut off here, Pamela. We're getting a ringing in the system. Uh, all, all the textbooks that I have, and I got them right behind me, a whole row of biology books here and over there, a whole case of them, they do teach that all forms of life are related. Yeah. And if they want to believe that, that's fine, but that's no longer science. That's part of their religion. Uh, so, Pamela, I appreciate you calling in, and uh, I, I feel, I guess, sad that you have... Uh, either are not understanding there is quite a difference and you are mixing your science and religion uh, or somebody's taught you that it is science and you fell for it uh, but they lied to you okay it's not science e evolution as, by the six definitions only number one is six is science the first five are indeed something religious what do they have and there's not not much you can argue with about that here, 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 here we go religion uh, there's a long definition of religion if I recall a bunch more AOL, here, AOL, AOL instant message here we got about 40 of them. While you look that up and summarize that, let me read a few of these real quick. Hey, I'll list of messages. Uh, let's see, I got a bunch already sent here earlier. When's the last time you updated the seminars? Uh, last couple of months. They're fresh 2003 series. From Fierce 321, I don't understand how we see stars trillions of miles away. Oh, that's answered thoroughly on seminar part seven uh, about the starlight question. Check it out on dinos or drdiner.com. Yeah, JMK1611. Is it true there are more people living than all people that have ever lived? Nobody knows for sure it's possible. There are six billion today. It is possible that there are more today than the total of those that have died. I don't, I don't you couldn't prove that. We don't know how many were alive before the flood, but it's possible. But it's definitely possible. One more here, are you ready? Okay. I'm an electrician at a state college today. While wiring a hood in the biology department, I asked my teacher to show me two and three-celled creatures to prove we came from one cell, and he said there aren't any, because multi-celled creatures must be more complex and cells split up the workload. Then he said a sponge is close with only hundreds of cells. It can develop from one cell. This is the proof he offered for evolution. Does this mean Bob Sponge is intermediate? No, this is ridiculous. There are no two-celled or three-celled creatures. This is a major obstacle for the evolutionists having to answer, you know, why aren't there any? I mean, if evolution really happened, there ought to be a whole series of events from one cell to multi-cell. The simplest we have are generally more like colonies of cells that work together. And, but you, when you get it from single cell to multi cell, there's a massive gap in there of information that they have no explanation for. Here, Gideon 524 writes in, I heard about a teacher in North Carolina tell one of her students who requested a printout of the Lord's Prayer that it was illegal to print it out. This teacher needs to get a job picking peaches or changing tires, okay? An honest job, yeah. An honest That's job. That's not true. Whatsoever. That's not true, yeah. You can print out the Lord's Prayer, okay? You can Bible it's, school if you want. You can witness to other kids if you want. Don't let any teacher tell you it's illegal. And you can go to Congress and see Bible verses printed all over the place, yeah. okay? Go to wallbuilders.com. They've got a lot of stuff on the history of 
our, our, our government and our country and how it's supposed to be run, and it was based on Christian principles. Yeah. Okay, uh, study Y45. Why does the Bible, what does the Bible say about time? Is one day to us the same as to God, or is it a thousand years? Two verses uh, that refer to that are 2 Peter 3, where it says a day is like a thousand years, and Psalm 90, where it says uh, yesterday is like a thousand years. Neither of those verses are saying God is limited by time. God is right now in yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and he's in all time. He's in all time and in all places. If he was limited by time, space, or matter, he would not be God. They would be God. We've covered that in other broadcasts. Find anything there? Yeah, uh, religion right here. I'm, I'm going to go down to definition number four uh, to get right to what it is. It, it states, you know, uh, a service and worship of God uh, or the supernatural. Definition number four says a cause, principle, or system of beliefs held to with at, uh, ardor and faith. There's no doubt about it. Evolution would fit that. You hold to it. This you believe it strongly, yeah. and they believe me. They're they're. It's a cause, somebody, principle, yeah. system of beliefs. This is a. It really has its own system of beliefs. Evolution does. Yeah, it does. Okay, here's uh, Mr. Nomak writes in. Hello, I have a question about Hawaii. My teacher says it was made over millions of years by a hole in a tectonic plate. Uh, I'll stop right there and say he's probably right that Hawaii is a hot spot, a hole in a tectonic plate. The plates are shifting and moving, and the lava's coming up. And Hawaii, I've been there three times to preach, four times I think. But yes, it's a uh, it's a hot spot. However, it doesn't. I wouldn't buy the millions of years part. It could have formed in 30 seconds, okay, uh, under proper conditions, you know, a few thousand years ago, which I think is answered with the biblical flood. I cover that in part six. But, go ahead. But, you finishing that one? No, I mean, okay, finish it. Uh, he said an underwater volcano erupted lava through the hole, making an island. I agree. Kind of like liquid coming out of an eyedropper. I agree. Uh, then are the plates moved and made a new island. I agree. That's correct. Except for the millions of years part, that is all correct, Andy. He's right. Hawaii is a hot spot. Dr. writes in, says you guys need a Pamela time limit. Uh, I agree. I, I think we did answer, Pamela, if you're still listening, I think we did answer that question very uh, correctly. Uh, evolution, when you really honestly want to step back and look at it, and this is difficult for many evolutionists to understand and to accept that Evolution is a religion. And when you put it in those terms, it's very difficult to understand that and, to, and to, now, for them to accept that. Let's talk about time limits. You realize how many students have to sit an hour a day for a semester or for a year and get evolution crammed at them? Yeah. And, and they gripe and we get, you know, one hour. <laughs> <laughs> and I really wanted to point out, I really want, I would like to take as much time as necessary to show Pamela the truth and to get her to realize that. But with the time restraints we have, we simply can't do that. Well, it goes so. back to plowing the backyard. You know, if you've yeah. got good dirt and rock, hard rock, you know, you spend your plow time the on the dirt. Plow the good dirt. That's right. First. I the, you take time for the rock if there's time. But, okay, there's so many that want to hear and they're emailing us saying, you know, yeah. I want to hear the, the truth. Okay. Uh, study Y45 writes in again. <clears throat> what does the Bible say about time? Oh, we did that one already. Fierce, uh, how do we see stars? Trillions of light years away. Jonathan, we got duplicates in here. Um, there we go. Uh, Hovind is great. He makes these people look stupid. Gideon, 542. Gideon, appreciate that. I, um, we don't want them to look stupid necessarily. I, I mean, think it is stupid to believe he came from a rock. However, our goal is really to win them. Yeah. Uh, we're not trying to hurt anybody here. And we have won many thousands, probably Definitely. tens of thousands to the Lord. Many uh, atheists and evolutionists sure, that have sure. been converted. Because we're here to help. Honestly, we got the truth. you know. Yeah. And so many write to us and say, I can't believe that I believed that evolution theory for so long. Yeah. Because it really is. It blinds you. It, yeah. it truly does. One guy said, I was, uh, he drove me to the, church, to the airport uh, about a month ago. He's, Brother Hovind, he said, my wife can't watch your tapes. It gives her a headache. I said, what? He said, yeah, every time she watches, she goes, uh, duh, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> we try <laughs> to keep it simple, that. okay? We operate about fourth grade level around here. We really want to keep it simple. And I think that's what frustrates the atheists. Definitely. Many of the creationist guys that are out speaking are brilliant, but they, they're only reaching the top, you know, 1% of the intellectuals. We put cookies on the lower shelf where the average person can get it, and that really frustrates the atheists because we, what we're doing is effective. They try to use the big words and, and the uh, educational background to sound real smart, and therefore you can't understand it, but it's true because it's science. Well, I taught school 15 years, and I can assure you, when you ask for an essay answer, <laughs> the longer the answer, the less they know about it. Okay. I'm they're trying very to familiar with that. You're trying, they're trying to snow you, okay? They hope you just weigh it and give them an A without actually yeah. reading it. You know, they talk and talk and talk. That means they know nothing, okay? Let me I finish with uh, one thing here, and we're going to run out of time. Uh, uh, Carl writes on his uh, geocities.com, Kent Hovind. I'm still on only this third section. Um, he says, stellar and planetary formation has been photographed four times by the Hays, uh, Hubble Space Telescope. Carl, you're mistaken, Okay. They might have told you that, and they might believe that, okay, but that's simply not correct. Nobody has photographed a star forming. There are known laws of science called Boyle's gas laws that would prevent dust from accumulating into a solid and then getting dense enough to create a star. One atheist told me, well, the solution to overcoming Boyle's gas laws, he said if 20 stars exploded near each other, it would produce enough energy to squeeze the dust together and make a new star. 
I said, that's brilliant, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you got to lose 20 to gain one, okay? First place, this is theoretical. We don't observe that. Secondly, you ought to run for Congress, man. You could help those guys borrow their way out of debt. <laughs> Losing 20 to gain one. Lose I mean, 20 to gain one. That explains that? how we got these six, oh. 70 sextillion of the them. The Bible says it best. Professing themselves to be wise, they became... Fools. Fools. That's yep. exactly right. Psalm 14, Psalm 51. Definitely. Okay, folks, tomorrow we're going to do this uh, several days in a row here. So if you get yeah. some skeptics to write in, if you want to get a hold of uh, the editor of some of these sites, uh, call in. Now, I'm going to hold you to your word, Carl. You said you'd correct things, and I'm telling you some things to correct. So by the time this tape gets out in a few weeks, when we get done editing in pictures and stuff, if we need to, uh, you know, you, some of you folks watching this may have found he actually made some corrections. If he's an honest man, he'll make the corrections. Yes. Listen, if you're listening today and you haven't trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, why not? Why on earth would you want to go to hell? Okay, God loves you. He wants to save you. 35 years ago, I said, Lord, I'm a sinner. I want you to forgive me and save me. And that's the purpose of our ministry. If you want to know more about it, go to our website, drdino.com, and click How to Get Saved. Call us and write us about it. Thanks a lot. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.